are over 180 topics you are going to be treating in your senior high school. This video has divided the 29 topics into three levels. We have level one, level two, and level three. And these levels are such that they have been arranged in order of increasing difficulty for the topics. So starting right now, the plane geometry. And plane geometry is a topic you will find not only in mathematics, as you know, you will find plane geometry also in physics. Moving on, we have the laboratory apparatus, knowing the laboratory apparatus. And I know most likely it's in the chemistry area. Knowing the laboratory apparatus will also help you in physics, during your physics practicals, your biology practicals. The next is the periodic table. Now, so knowing the elements which will help you understand atoms, ions, valency, naming of compounds, and so on. Now, you need this in your chemistry and a little bit of biology. So you see, chemistry is such that you just need to know the element because chemistry revolves around all the first 20 elements. That is if you are studying for your WAC or no deck exams. And almost every topic, once you lack in the understanding of the periodic table or what the periodic table entails, you are most likely to lack in a topic in chemistry. Looking at the next one, conversion of units. Now conversion of units, you need it in mathematics, you also need it in physics and a little bit of chemistry as well. In fact, you need it in chemistry because of the topic called more concept, which I will talk about. So, conversion of units, that is distance, time, and then mass. Nanometer, picometer, femtometer, and so on. You just need to be a master of these topics. Right from the junior high school and the senior high school, this is a topic that your mathematics teacher would always stress on. You find this in mathematics, you find this in chemistry, you also find this in physics. If you don't know these basics, you know, no matter what complex topic you understand, it will be futile because you would have to do a conversion ratio and proportion. Knowledge in ratio and proportion will help you during your time of working on word problem questions. Ratio and proportion will help you in mathematics, physics, and maybe even in chemistry. Standard form decimal places. There are times where you solve questions involving decimals and then you are asked to live in standard form. That is in mathematics and then definitely in physics as well. You're supposed to leave your answer in standard form or leave your answer in a certain number of decimal places. And this is where this topic will come relevant to you. Conversion of units. That is specifically time, distance, and then mass. Very, very important. In mathematics, you need it. In chemistry, you need it. In physics as well, you also need the same topic. In the level one I mentioned, plane geometry. Now in the level two, you need to understand coordinate geometry to know how your graph works. Now, when you are plotting graph, that is in physics and then most likely mathematics, you are asked to find the gradient, parallel lines, and so on. You need to understand them. Getting to understand the coordinate geometry very well will help you to master or score all in your graph work. Most students are not able to do well because they don't know the topics to master. In fact, even in chemistry, you draw graph so this will also help you in your chemistry the next area to give attention to is the algebraic expression and with the algebraic expression you know it has to do with mathematics involving variables so you need to be a master of linear equation you also need to be a master of simultaneous equation and those will help you in mathematics chemistry and then physics as well now when it comes to quadratic equation quadratic equation you are going to have quadratic curves and this will help you in your mathematics and then maybe your physics not really most likely to meet them but understanding how these curves work would help you to be able to draw your curves and even with the mathematics we have elective mathematics or further mathematics and then core mathematics you just need to know it you know it's so compulsory if you want to be a master in science and math these topics i'm mentioning should be something that you are giving most attention to and if you are enjoying this video i would urge you to like this video share it on social media with your friends so that they can also become like you and don't forget to subscribe let's continue another most important topic you are you need to understand is indices and then logarithm you need indices and logarithm in mathematics that's your core mass and your elective mass as well as even in chemistry because there's a topic called radioactivity where you need to do calculation using logarithm and if you lack knowledge in logarithm 
you'll be found wanting and even in physics as well you know anything which has to do with calculations exponents your physics and your mathematics are the go-to subjects and since chemistry also involves some form of calculation you need it for chemistry as well you know before i continue i'll say this success is not by accident success is worked so to be successful in your science and math subjects you just need to be intentional about them so the next thing we are looking at is circles now in elective maths called mathematics you deal with you deal with in circles you don't just say circles it's not only about circles calculating the area of a circle the circumference the sector and so on no any topic in mathematics core mathematics elective mathematics that has to do with circles you just need to understand circles to be able to grasp them very well especially you have a topic like circle theorem which always drop in your core mathematics you should just understand how circles work plus even looking at circle theorem you need to also know your plane geometry very very well so understanding circles will also help you to get your physics straight for example when you are dealing with a topic like when you are dealing with angular motion you have circles there and your knowledge in circles would help you grasp the proving of the formulas and so on the next relevant topic here is sets sets now sets definitely is needed you find it in mathematics your core mathematics your elective mathematics and maybe your physics now with the core mathematics and elective mathematics you have a topic like calculus which is differentiation and integration where you are most likely to find sets and in other areas of mathematics and physics you are most likely to find sets especially with physics the mechanics aspect sometimes vector question could have said and if you don't have knowledge about set you wouldn't be able to answer effectively or accurately now another very important topic is the linear motion linear motion which you would need most especially most primarily in physics in physics in physics and then you know some questions do come in mathematics your core mathematics where you need your knowledge your formulas in linear motion formula for acceleration formula for velocity and so on in order to be able to get your linear motion right another topic i categorize in the level two is naming of compounds you know if you want to be a master of chemistry you cannot over emphasize this this topic naming of compounds you see understanding chemistry is not just about knowing a bit you can't just know a bit and be a master you should understand everything from the beginning to the end to be a master you know there are some topics or some questions that when you answer you don't need your tutor or your lecturer to tell you that you got it right you just need to know that you got it right and that's what chemistry is so the naming of compounds it will help you in chemistry and also in biology because sometimes you have to do with chemistry of the macromolecules okay so the next thing is the next topic in the level two is understanding and figuring out word problem you know mathematics is a skill and you know i learned this the hard way i had to learn mathematics on my own and that was when i realized that the more i studied mathematics on my own the better i became so understanding and figuring out word problem for yourself this is what will make you a champion in mathematics most students are used to getting the formula and filling in with figures but when it comes to word problem this is where your thinking ability is measured and the only way to become better with word problem is to solve more questions because there isn't a specific way to go about word problem once you're exposed to more questions you know how to manipulate the English language with the figures and let us know how to represent figures with variables you will know how to go about it and this will also help you in your physics now to the level three the final level the first topic is trigonometry trigonometry is in mathematics and majorly in physics you can't do away with them you can't just do away with trigonometry in physics right from the first year you are being taught what you call socatois 
right from the first year, the first year topics. So trigonometry is a must, is a must. Also in core mathematics, you always have core mathematics um, in a section B. Trigonometry is always in a section B. You just can't do away with it. Now to the next topic, I can't overemphasize on the reasons why organic chemistry is supposed to be taught in the first year when you are doing chemistry, elective chemistry. And the conventional way is that organic chemistry is taught in the third year. But the funny thing is, a topic like hybridization, which you are taught in the first year, needs an understanding of organic chemistry to master it. There are other topics you might not understand fully until you know your organic chemistry. And the funny thing is, organic chemistry is not that difficult. It's just that it has a lot of unusual symbols that most students are not conversant with. But if you would listen to your tutor or the one teaching you, organic chemistry can be taught to even someone in junior high school for he or she to understand. So organic chemistry is more in chemistry and a little bit of it is found in biology, evolution of vectors. And you're most likely to find this in your physics. Yes, most likely to find in your physics. The reason why I'm mentioning this topic is because it will help you to understand a lot of, a lot of other topics as well as in elective mathematics as well. Elective mathematics has a physics aspect of it. So understanding it in the physics aspect would help you get your good grade in elective maths. Because with elective maths, you have a specific set of questions that come from the physics area, that is vectors and mechanics. So giving attention to your physics would help you always do well without stress or struggle. Know that your full mark for the mechanics and vector side is assured. Now, a very, very important topic that always drops, electricity. Electricity. You can't do away with electricity if you are preparing for integrated science exam for WASI or NOVDEC, even in a BEC. So you need it mostly for your physics. And the reason why, even though it's just for one elective, the reason why I'm bringing it here is you just can't do away with it. If you're a science student, you just need to understand it because you're most likely to get it. The kinetic molecular theory, you have this topic in chemistry at the same time, you also have it in physics. Just yes, that the chemistry has what it focuses on and then the physics also has what it focuses on. So giving attention to these topics right at the beginning of your studies would make you a master. If you're a science student, you're most likely to find radioactivity, which I've called nuclear reactions. You're most likely to find radioactivity first in chemistry. Now in your final year in in your final year as a science student, you will find it in physics, but you realize that what you have in physics would go further into what you studied in chemistry. So this leads me to the next topic, which is atomic and nuclear physics. So I would like to talk about all of these together. Atomic and nuclear physics will help you to understand what you did in chemistry. That is in your final year, when you were dealing with the structure of an atom. So the same with nuclear physics. Nuclear physics will also help you to understand what you did more in the chemistry as well. So you see that these topics are connected. And if they are connected, assuming you are preparing to write your knock deck, you know what to focus on. Assuming your tutors in school are not done with all the topics you are supposed to study. You know, if you're going to write knock deck, these topics should be your go-to topics. I know knock deck, maybe you are in your second year writing the knock deck, testing the waters. You want to know your strength. Most, you know, most questions are most likely to come from these topics I mentioned to you. Now, probability. Probability is a topic you will find in core mathematics, elective mathematics as well. You know, you can't do away with them because they always drop every single year, every year, and they are challenging. That's why they are found in a level three. But if you would listen to your tutor, solve more questions, have in mind, you are the one helping yourself to master the skill of mathematics. You would always be ready to pass. Genetics and variation is most likely to be found in biology, just biology, only biology. But why did I include it? I included it because 
you are most likely to get in your integrated science as well as your elective biology. You know, this is a topic that requires a lot of thinking. And, you know, most students are used to memorizing and pouring out, but things are changing. We are transitioning to the STEM system, which requires a lot of thinking. So, WIAC is most likely to bring give you questions on genetics and variation for you to think, to reproduce your understanding, not just to be able to pour out what you memorized. Now, more concept, I would call it the almighty more concept, because almost every topic in chemistry has something to do with more concept. Almost every topic. And questions can be set and related to almost all topics, almost in chemistry. When you understand more concepts very, very well, you will enjoy chemistry, especially the chemistry practicals, because most of the chemistry practicals is on more concepts. You just can't hate more concepts and enjoy chemistry. Sequence and series. Sequence and series is found in core mathematics as well as selective mathematics. So you need to understand it very well. And they are, this topic is always dropping in the final year, WIAC and OVEC exam. And these levels are such that they are being arranged in order of increasing difficulty for the topics. So if you are in an area where you have the opportunity for someone to teach you, you can just go around can just go through all of these topics with ease but if you have no one to help you understand them i would advise you just stick to the level one for now and when you increase your understanding in them you get help and then go to level two and then followed by level three click on the image by my channel name to see more videos which i make